Welcome to, are we recording? Good God we are. Uh, welcome to a new episode of Barnacle Craft. <laughs> the most regularly posted series of all time. Anyway, today we are going to be uh, casually touring a project of mine called Strandberg, which is a huge medieval city in in barnacle craft the best game ever created and uh we're doing this at uh at a very late unspecified hour of the night so i have to whisper but it's gonna be great um so enjoy and um that there you go so anyhow this project is is highly unfinished um many incomplete areas and half completed areas and areas that don't exist yet and I'm not gonna go super in depth because I don't want to spoil too much for when it's eventually done someday in 10,000 years uh, but this has been the only thing I've been working on for about the past year and a half so I'm, I'm actually uh, feeling pretty dedicated to finishing this one which is not what usually happens with my Minecraft projects but anyways so yes it's a big old medieval city uh, out on a bay next to the ocean, uh, as most big cities tend to be port towns. Um, here you can see we are at the docks. I'll just start talking about the area that we happen to be in. Uh, so this is called Rustport, um, which is the port of the city. Wow, incredible. And uh, it has two sides here. It's sort of a giant horseshoe um, with a... Uh, large river gate that you can see just down there that uh, allows smaller boats to pass uh, through the harbor into the river that cuts through most of the or all of the city it goes all the way to the opposite end um, we have this boat here F fancy very boat like there's lots of custom textures many of which are stolen from Westeros craft and adapted to 16x16 uh, 16 16. Um, such as this rigging and those ropes, uh, so enjoy that. I'm sure there's other stuff I'll forget to mention. Um, but yeah, here we're in a little warehouse, it looks like. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of wander around the city, and at certain points I might, uh, fly around just to show it better, because some areas are fun to walk around in, but others are so unfinished that we'll probably just fly over them. I don't want this to be too long as well. Uh, but yeah, so, so my goal here is to create a completely immersive and 100% explorable build so every single building is furnished and all that uh, which is fun and not tedious at all no insanity here I'm doing perfectly fine um, you can see we have a big tower here the whole harbor is surrounded by uh, very high defensive walls um, for for safety reasons and uh, I, I don't know what other reasons you would have them anyways we have all these signs here these are indicating the occupation of, uh, of the different places so you can see this is a leather tanner based on the leather in the sign so you can see they have a little roll of leather there and some leather hanging up and then they would actually do the tanning out in this little yard here um, so yeah I've, I've tried to keep uh, the occupation is fairly historically accurate, so I'm sure I'm not doing an amazing job, uh, but I, I think I'm doing an okay one in terms of uh, giving these little businesses and all that everything that they need. Let's check out this building. This is called the Blue Barnacle, very appropriately named for the series. I didn't even think about that. Uh, and I, I think maybe that was supposed to be like that. Doesn't really matter. It's supposed to be like an old fishing net hung up on the side of the building. Um, you can see this is a little tavern, and uh, it's very rough and tumble and kind of messy, and uh, it's just, uh, you know, one of those little local places that uh, is kind of a dive, but that I'm sure all the local people really enjoy. Uh, this is supposed to be like a wagon wheel, which kind of only works if you notice that I use them as literal wagon wheels. <laughs> um, but if you keep an eye out for that consistency, then maybe you'll figure out... <laughs> <laughs> that that's what that was supposed to be. We have a fishmonger here, another fishmonger. This is an unlabeled little house. Uh, let's head back here. I think there's some 
Yeah, we got some nice little sort of backyard areas, which is some storage and a little wheelbarrow, all sorts of little immersive details. This is super inspired from Westeros Craft. And yeah, I, I'm really excited about it. I'm really happy with everything I was able to do. Again, I've been doing it for about a year and a half. I started this town actually with this area. This gatehouse here, I think, was maybe literally the first thing I built, along with this dock, uh, these three buildings, and then this little boat. This was like the first stuff. Um, the gatehouse has since been uh, highly renovated to be made bigger, for one, because I didn't realize just how big of a city this was going to turn into. I thought it was going to be more of a little village or something. <laughs> I was wrong. Um, uh, but yeah, you know, I've, I've started and left unfinished a lot of big Minecraft projects. I'm just checking to make sure we're still recording. Love it. Um, but, but I actually have a, a lot of confidence in finishing this one. Um, uh, not really because I've been at it so long, because I've actually been at certain projects longer that I never ended up finishing, but simply because of the amount that I've gotten done in a year and a half. So anyhow, let's stop dawdling around. Also just because this is just like my favorite thing I've been able to do. Um, most of my other builds, I end up just not planning things out well enough, and I end up, you know, rebuilding and updating things more than building new things, and that just really slows slows the process down, but that's not the case here. Let's take this little boat over to the other side of the harbor. You can see we have this little drawbridge here um, that would allow uh, dock workers and such to get from one side of the harbor to the other, um, but it is raised right now, so we got to take this little boat. Um, I think if I steer it in, like, right here, I should be able to jump up onto the dock. Yes, I can. Um, I don't remember who gave me this idea to use Minecraft, actual Minecraft boats in custom boat designs, but bless that person, whoever they were. I'll credit them one day. There's a lot of designs that need crediting, but that's for the final cinematic video in 2045 or whenever it is. Um... I really love this little area. This is actually the most recently built. One side of the port is the oldest area of the city, and this is the most recently built area that I've been building up. I'll try to start going a little quicker now. I won't go inside as many buildings. We'll check out. This is a net maker, I believe. Yes. See, they have a little loom and stuff for weaving together the fishing nets. A little area to sleep. Very, very small, bare-bones little house, um, but I like it a lot. Uh, this is one of the smallest houses I think I've ever built. Uh, but I'm, I'm very happy with everything I was able to pack in. Lots of little details. Uh, this is supposed to be like uh, a barrel of fish um, with the dead coral, which I think works pretty well. I think it's pretty clear what it's supposed to be, honestly, especially uh, just with context of seeing that repeated around the city in different places. Um, you can see I'm also using some more custom textures to do these little like fish traps out here. Uh, which I think look really cool. We got some more little fishing boats tied up. I don't know. I'm probably using the Optifine zoom a little too much. Is this is this enough for you? Anyways, um, we got some very nice messy sea rocks with lots of different textures. I really like how gritty this all looks. I'm really happy with a lot of the texture uh, mixes and block mixes and gradients and stuff that I've been able to get going in this area. Um, I think they're looking quite good. And uh, if we come over here i'm really happy with this little set of buildings in particular this this extremely finished inn um and this extremely finished warehouse <laughs> anyhow uh this will be another gate uh, that'll go off to a district here on the side of this little small river or stream uh, that'll be the slums um which should transition fairly smoothly into the docks, because in case you can't tell, the docks are a bit of a lower class area of the city. Lots of small little huts and houses. We do have a couple big boat houses down there, where boats will be built and or repaired and then launched, uh, which I'm excited about. I like how those are looking. <coughs> uh, and there's the river gate as well, and another look at that little, uh, I almost called it a portcullis, drawbridge design. little pulley up there as well for hoisting cargo up into, uh, up into that little gatehouse thingy-majig. Uh, another tower here with some hoardings. Lots of fun stuff. I'm pointing out everything. I need to stop doing that. Uh, anyways. Um, so yeah, so moving into the next sort of district, we have uh, Merchant's Hill, uh, which is uh, technically really refers to kind of this region because uh, this is where it really starts turning into more of a proper hill, but kind of this whole side of the city I consider part of Merchant's Hill or loosely part of the Merchant's District. A lot of it is just sort of generic upper middle class ish stuff 
Uh, so you can see some bigger, more kind of classic uh, daub and waddle medieval style houses. Uh, these are some really old ones here, but I think they still look okay. Um, and there's some newer, nicer ones in different areas. Um, these are all newer here, relatively speaking, uh, and much bigger. As you can see, we're getting some very high-class, wealthy areas of the city. And we have this uh, market square here, which is one of my favorite builds in the city so far. Um, or one of my favorite little spots. This was heavily inspired by a lot of stuff from Vigo Man and his city, Crassburg. Um, he had a number of areas like this um, that I, I knew I had to, to rip off. I mean, take inspiration from. Uh, I mean, it's just a market square. It's not really copyrighted. Anyhow, um, you can see some banners up here. These banners do refer to specific uh, fictional noble houses that I have come up with. Uh, for the world that the city is in. Um, so the, the blue, yellow, and white is uh, House Thorn, which is the house that actually rules over the city. Um, and you'll see lots of other banners around. You can see we've got all sorts of little villager people selling stuff. Um, but yeah, I really like this area. I like how all these buildings turned out. I think they look nifty. Um, over here, uh, oh, I really like this grouping of buildings too. Uh, over here we have the Temple of Rochi. Of Roshi being a fictional rain god um, that the people in this city worship. You can see a little teaser for something up there. Anyways, um, and uh, yeah, it's it's a big temple thing. I won't go inside. I'll, I won't explore it. I'll leave that for a future video. This was supposed to be brief. This is supposed to be a teaser, and I'm just showing everything. Um, anyways, uh, this boat is like directly ripped off of, of a design I saw, like block for block. Um, just thought I would point that out. Got some nice riverbank terraforming, which I have not finished because it's just floating. Um, but uh, I, I think it looks mighty nice. Um, I really like uh, these new mud blocks, and with the soul soil, it's just it's perfect for uh, well for mud <laughs> mostly. Um, we have this big inn here, um, which carries over into another district uh, as you can see a very colorful one this is called champions hill which is the highest hill in the city and this is the nobles district where all the noblemen and lords and knights would live uh and it's very colorful and very heavily stone and clay and plaster not a lot of timber um that you will come by uh, which means some very boldly colored buildings and i forgot that i apparently didn't finish that okay um we can see it from this angle some very tall buildings as well um i really like the look of this area this is the most recently started district um i basically built everything you see here that's a part of this little area in the course of like a couple weeks this summer and i just kind of got wildly inspired to do it and i had been kind of dreading doing it because i knew i wanted to do the stone heavy stone thing like i, I didn't i wanted to have a an area that didn't have very much timber to kind of distinguish it as being higher class um like they're just using stone as their primary building material but to be honest when i first conceived of that idea i kind of was just thinking of like typical gray stone smooth stone and andesite and stone brick and such like this dumb building and um and then pretty quickly I was like, you know, uh, we can actually get a lot more colorful with this, especially with the roofs. We have lots of copper roofs and stuff, and I think it looks great. Um, we have a, another cool landmark over here called Black Spire Bridge, a bridge covered in buildings. And uh, yeah, this was inspired by uh, Zalabot, I think is the name of the Instagram account. Um, that I found that I, I don't think it's Conquest. I think it's their own text pack, but it kind of looks like Conquest. And they have a, uh, a bunch of beautiful builds and stuff. And uh, they do these amazing uh, building covered bridges. And uh, I just had to do one. And I'm, I'm really happy with it. Particularly the, uh, the big tower that gives it its name. Um, yeah, I, I think it turned out really nice. You can see these houses here have a slightly different style. They have these sort of... Uh, these roofs that are on the opposite axis um, and uh, they almost are looking a little more like Victorian or something uh, not quite actually Victorian but just leaning into that style a little more a little more neo-gothic actually is what they really are and um, 
Uh, these are hinting at what this area is going to look like back here. This is going to be called the Sunset Hill uh, because it's on the west side of the city. And it's not going to have a super specific purpose, but it's just going to be, I think uh, in the lore, I'm going to make it the newest part of the city. So the buildings look a little fancier and a little different. Um, over in this big blank area, I'm going to have more of an industrial district with like brick makers and potters and stuff like that. Uh, and maybe some water mills uh, along here. We already have a few water mills here and there. There's one down there that you can see. Um, lots of nice terraformed nature, nature. Very majestic. Um, anyways, uh, so finally we have Castle Stormkiss. Just ignore the utter state of disarray that this poor friggin' gatehouse is in. Um, uh, the whole castle is, is only partially done, maybe about half done on the exterior and almost just not even started on the interior yet. Um, but yeah, so this is the castle of the city where the royal family or the noble family, since they're not the kings of the whole kingdom, uh, would live. Uh, and you can see I have, uh, done a decent amount up here. Um, I have some Christmas decorations chilling out. Very beautiful. I'm actually really happy with this Christmas tree, even though I built it in about a minute and a half. That that's an exagger that's a massive exaggeration. Uh, five minutes, whatever. Um, we have a little vegetable garden here to get some fresh ingredients, uh, and we have all sorts of nice little buildings and just these really ornate looking pads with these beautiful gardens and and planting areas and very ornate details on all the little gates and stuff. This is obviously you know literally as high class and as fancy as anything gets in the city because. Duh, it's the castle. <laughs> and um, and so I've taken full advantage and made it all whitewashed and uh, really given it a, uh, a very prestigious, fancy-looking sort of aesthetic. This is the uh, the donjon, or the, the biggest tower of the castle, where the royal family is actually going to live. Uh, the donjon, historically, was often the reason it sounds like dungeon uh, a bit is because that is where the word is actually derived from, to my knowledge. And so the donjon was typically like the, the highest tower in the castle, and I think it was usually used to hold a prisoner, but um, I think it more generically just means the biggest tower in a castle um, as well. I don't know. I might be getting that wrong. Regardless, big tower where royal family lives. Uh, and there is a little balcony uh, right up here where if I was brave enough to destroy my computer with like a 64 chunk render distance thanks to Optifine, um, you, you could hypothetically get a great view. Um, uh, but yeah, and this will be the Great Hall, and, uh, we have a little training yard down in here with some nice little details that I'll just let you appreciate and not explain. And anyhow, I think that's about all I want to show. I think, I think the problem with this video is that I just want to talk about everything, but I don't want to give everything away and... Uh, you know, eventually I'll be able to give a much more thorough tour when it's all done. You know, the final thing I'll do is I'll, I'll show off where the secret map room is uh, so we can look at the map real quick because I think that would be enjoyable. And here is the map of the city. Uh, so you can see Rustport there where we started and Champions Hill, Castle Stormkiss, Temple of Rochi, uh, the Temple of Amoya, which I didn't show because it needs to be redone, and it's literally only a frame, but it needs to be redone. Um, uh, but it's going to be a big Gothic cathedral-style temple. Uh, and then we have Merchant Seal Black Spire Bridge. I haven't labeled the Sunset Hill yet because there's basically nothing there. Uh, and I don't have a name for the Industrial District yet because I've kind of added it in last minute because I realized I needed it. And I haven't labeled the slums yet. They're going to be called uh, Mud Wallow, though. That'll be the name of the... The lower class district over there and uh yeah uh, anyhow that's about it that is strandberg in its current form uh, i just think it's you know something that i'm i'm very excited about and i just want to kind of uh show off you know a little in progress behind the scenes thing since you probably won't see it again for a long time but if you do it'll probably be on my main actual bionicle saurus channel of a great popularity and fame uh, mostly due to my fame uh, <laughs> and uh, it'll probably be an actual cinematic or tour or something like that I'd like to do both I mean I think I kind of need to do a cinematic for the average viewer but for the committed viewer I would like to do like a ridiculously long uh, all-on-foot uh, tour of the whole thing when it's done 
because I think that would be fun. I would just enjoy doing it, frankly. It's mostly for me, gotta be honest. Uh, but yeah, um, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any just random stuff I'd like to show off. Um, you know, how about we end the video uh, where you will begin on the map uh, when you spawn in eventually, uh, when the map goes up for download again someday in 2050. Uh, and I, I believe, I believe it is this bed is the spawn point. Well, it is now. <laughs> it doesn't really matter just yet if it's actually set, obviously. But, um, uh, yeah, you can, you can use your imagination. You will start down in the hole of this humble cargo ship. And then you will go upstairs and find yourself in a magical land of blocks. And that is it. Enjoy your day, sirs and ma'ams and others.